based on the data from Cox Automotive, EV prices are now near parity with gasoline-powered vehicles. EV average transaction prices are now at roughly $50,800. Tesla's average selling price is $50,000. And an average gasoline-powered vehicle in the U.S. sells for $48,800, roughly. But I think it's important to... Also remember that on average EVs are smaller than gas powered vehicles so that number is not really going to be exactly accurate but the trend is abundantly clear. The prices of gas powered vehicles are going up and the prices of EVs are going down. And Volkswagen actually sells a few EVs now. Volkswagen delivered 394,000 EVs in 2023, accounting for less than 9% of total sales. Volkswagen's EV sales are up 21% year over year, so not a very impressive growth number, but not too bad. We know that Tesla really needs more 4680 batteries, and Panasonic says it still plans for a third US EV battery plant. It's expected that this factory would help Tesla with batteries and the soonest that we might hear about this is gonna be April of this year. The value of X has fallen dramatically but since Elon's acquisition the company is fundamentally stronger and healthier. Everything is better except there are less advertisers. Which if you think about it that sort of improves the user experience, doesn't it? In the long run though, I think Elon will definitely win and he will win big with X. As we grow user market share, says Elon, advertisers will have the choice of advertising on this platform or losing to their competitors. And James is even praising Elon. I am very seriously looking into investing some money into X slash Twitter. If you know of any way to do that, leave a comment down below. X is certainly attracting many media people. For example, Don Lemon, show is coming to X. I know many of you probably don't like Lemon, probably many of you probably hate him, but I think it's good to have diversity on the platform. I don't think we want to have eco chambers, even if some of these uh, people that come on, you completely 100% disagree. I think it's still good to see different opinions. I think the way you win is not by silencing other people, but by presenting your facts and then showing everyone that your facts are the right facts. You win with better speech, not censored speech. There's a giant feud going on right now between Mark Cuban and Elon Musk, and Mark Cuban is a racist, says Elon. I made a whole video of all their feud on the other channel. Go ahead and watch it if you haven't yet. The link is going to be down below. But the solution for Elon is not to silence Mark Cuban or for Mark Cuban to silence Elon. I think communicating, debating, putting out where one is wrong or right is the way to go, I think. But Mark Eben is losing this one badly. There's more drama going on. X has drawn criticism from mainstream outlets after an apparent ban wave today hit a number of prominent left-wing and journalist accounts. The affected accounts have reportedly not been given an explanation so far. It seems like these accounts were critical of Israel. Elon says, I will investigate. Obviously, it is okay to be critical of anything, but it is not okay to call for extreme violence as that is illegal apart from the UN exemption where officials from countries recognized by the UN can say what they say at the UN. For the record, I do not personally agree with your views. Nonetheless, the point of freedom of speech is allowing those whose views you disagree with to express those views. The Elon Musk and Mark Cuban feud is now too big to ignore. This explains Mark Cuban's ridiculous overcompensation regarding racism. Same thing happened with Me Too. Guys who got bust suddenly became feminists. I know I'm prejudiced. I know I'm bigoted in a lot of different ways. You know, and I've said this before. If I see a black kid in a hoodie at night on the other side of the street, bouncing, up, you know, I'm probably on the same side of the street. I'm probably going to walk to the other side of the street. I can see someone that looks like a pope, but if they are walking in a hoodie late at night, I am going to walk the other way. You're just asking for trouble. Let's be brutally honest here, right? Um, drugs are bad. Right, yes. and I'm well known for not being a fanboy, right? I, I'm not a fan of Elon Musk himself. I'm a huge fan of his success in EVs, right? Um, I, think this, I think this has been known to people in uh, government for many years. 
I first had a conversation with someone in a, in a relevant um, entity about this more than five years ago. Mm. And I think that there are several other uh, people that could have been highlighted in that article. So it, it smells like a hit piece, right? Why now is the bigger question. Um, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, given that Tesla's really executing. They're doing a phenomenal job at SpaceX. Um, you know, and we can talk about real risks that don't have anything to do with uh, Elon's recreational uh, chemistry. But even a Tesla bear says that these accusations and worries about Elon are basically nonsense. It's just a hit piece. You know, it is just indeed a hit piece. But is there, though, a sort of overhang just in terms of some of that uncertainty, given the fact whether or not investors, shareholders should be looking past these recent headlines, but in terms of what that could then mean for leadership of the company down the line, how do you evaluate that as an analyst? I think I think Elon Musk is the key man at Tesla. Mm. He's the key man at Tesla. You can put him in one of his rockets and send him to Mars. Mm. He's still the key man at Tesla, mm. right? So he is a colorful, creative character. He is known as being a difficult, charismatic man. Um, and you know, I think if he's, if he leaves Tesla, we have a big problem, right? He's the one that basically. Um, has been the creative drive behind this company. And, you know, I give him full credit for the success of the EV industry today. I think that Musk has, deserves tremendous credit for the success of the industry. And the industry is inevitable now. And that would not have happened without Musk. Yep, I certainly agree with Craig here. But it's also important to note that even if Elon just completely disappeared from Tesla, I think Tesla for some time would actually still be okay. The culture would still remain the same. Maybe not as good, but it would still be fairly good for some time. I don't think Tesla would make the Optimus bot work anymore, or at least not to the same extent. But Tesla as a company would still be really strong, just like how Apple remained fairly strong even after Steve Jobs was no longer present. I just think Apple could have been a much bigger company if Steve Jobs was still around. What are your biggest risks? By the way, you, you won euphemism of the day with recreational chemistry. Uh, but at the end of the day here, we got to think about what are the biggest risks to Tesla that you're kind of looking through and trying to evaluate here in 2024? Uh, it's demand, right? Demand and obviously competition, yeah. right? So the lightning most visibly cut its forecast in half. Um, you know, sell side uh, consensus numbers for about 22% growth you know, 20% unit growth, right? 20% uh, revenue growth still seems a little aggressive, right? We're gonna have continued price cuts. You know, ever since, um, you know, even in the first quarter, everybody was saying that the, the second quarter would be the bottom. Well, no, it wasn't. You know, this last quarter was not the bottom. You know, I, I don't think that um, fourth quarter margins are likely to be particularly strong. I think they are quite likely to be weak, even though we did see a 5% beat on units. So we probably see continued margin uh, weakness throughout this year as they put through price cuts. They deal with issues in China. You know, um, having BYD larger than them in China is a huge deal. You know, that's their most important, most profitable market. You know, they, they have fundamental structural challenges that they need to deal with. And it brings us back to, you know, what are the strategic bungles over the last couple of years? Craig's tip Frank's profile rating is actually not that low. It's 1,230 out of 8,600 analysts. So I think it's not completely foolish to hear at least what he's saying. But his tip Frank's Tesla star history is hilarious. He was right 55% of the time and yet his average return is minus 78%. <laughs> He said sell Tesla stock right before the huge rally. So you know, the moment he says sell, that's actually going to be pretty bullish, right? And going off of that, what you just said about BYD and the fact that they did overtake Tesla, what do you think that signals, more broadly speaking, if we take a step back, not just about Tesla, but really about China's involvement and maybe leadership here going forward within the EV space? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very important question. They should have launched the mini car. They were supposed mm -hmm. to launch that, or at least made the decision to launch that in 19, and they punted, um, you know, uh, ostensibly because it would have been margin, gross margin dilutive. Well, mm -hmm. look at margins now, mm -hmm. right? And then, you know, India, they hemmed and hawed, from what I understand, about entering that market. So Times of India has confirmed there's a 500,000 unit facility that's gonna get built. You know, Musk has gotta start making more noise about that. You know, these are, these are big structural challenges 
um, that if he wants to be the player with his 20 million units that he dreams about, you know, I don't endorse that number. Mm -hmm. But to start getting there, he's going to have to do a lot better job internationally and then as far as diversity of offering. Well, let's not forget that the Nissan Leaf launched in 2010. So because it launched first, it should have outsold Tesla's models, right? The Nissan Leaf outsells the Model 3, right? Based on Troy's data, Tesla sold 508,000 Model 3s in 2023. Nissan sold 650,000 Nissan Leafs actually since 2010. <laughs> and the Model 3 came out in 2017. Am I thrilled that we do not have the next generation car yet? No, I'm not. But I'm just saying that just because it is going to come a little bit later, it does not mean that it will not absolutely obliterate the entire industry. So I, I, I don't see a lot of scaling back of manufacturing per se. Okay. I think, you know, the idea of maybe uh, Shanghai going to 3 million units, we should consider that on hold. Um, you know, Shanghai uh, will probably look to optimize its utilization at, at that facility. I think we should really look at, you know, India. I think we should look at Mexico and potentially Canada. Um, and how do they how do they serve um, how do they serve the North American customer more profitably? Yeah. Those I think are the most important questions. I'm really curious about India. Troy thinks that it will be just an assembly plant. It's not really going to be a real factory, but that does not seem to be set in stone yet. And likely we are going to hear some more big news about Tesla's presence in India very soon. So I'm looking forward to that. As promised, I published an exclusive video on my other channel, the Clips channel. It's about Elon Musk's feud with Mark Cuban. Elon Musk actually called Mark Cuban a hypocrite. So go ahead and watch this video right now and make sure to subscribe to that new Clips channel if you don't want to miss any clips like this one. I think this clip, if I put this on here, this video today would have been 40 minutes long and I don't think people really want to see 40 minute video. So that's why I put it on this channel.